Oh, hi there. Oh, didn't see you there. She maps. Give us a talk. Hello, everyone. Um, so here I am in person. Usually I'm behind the screen with a pen on the board. Um, today, my class have asked me, who are here today with me, yep. um, <laughs> to give them a little talk about how to really, really achieve maths, okay? I've put a few words down, I've thought about what to say, um, and there's going to be a fair few quotes in here, I'm afraid. So, first quote, if you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got, okay? That means that maybe you've not been revising as much as you should have done, and you've not been getting the grade that you think you're capable of, maybe you should start revising a bit more, okay? Or maybe your revision technique is a bit wrong. Maybe we need to do more to help us achieve, okay? I believe the most important thing to help you achieve in maths is how you think about maths, your mindset. Okay? So, if you have the right mentality, all the other things, you're going to start finding they go a bit better. Okay? So set yourself a goal that's personal for you. What do you want to achieve? Is it a grade C? Is it a grade B? Is it an A star? Okay? Decide what it is that you think you can do. <laughs> Everyone has different capabilities, okay? Everyone's at different starting points. I want you to be in the position when your exam comes to walk into that exam hall with your head held high, confident, thinking, I'm going to do well. I deserve to do well because I've been working hard, okay? That's the target, I think. So, maths is a challenge. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's not try and lie. Maths is very, very difficult. I'm someone who's been struggling with maths for a long time and doing more and more difficult maths. But whatever level it is, there is going to be a challenge involved. It's how you face that challenge and how you think about it. Imagine you're playing a computer game, if you like computer games. I used to play on the N64. If I was on the N64 and I couldn't do a level, I wouldn't just quit, I would keep trying different ways until I got it. I reckon there's a lot of you out there on YouTube who are really good at computer games because you keep trying the same thing over and over again, getting better at it and improving. Okay? Maths isn't something that you're either good at straight away or you can't do. Maths is a gradual learning curve. The problem is you're going to find difficulty if there's something you missed in maths maybe earlier on that other people have picked up on. It might be times tables, it might be negative numbers. If you sort these out, you'll find that your maths in general gets much, much better and you'll improve. Okay? So, what do I see success as? I think that success is when you get up the last time that you fall down. It's not to do with how many times you've fallen down. If you look at the most successful people in life, they've faced lots and lots of failures. You'll find that very rich people, some millionaires, have gone bankrupt before. Okay? They might have gone bankrupt twice and still become a millionaire again. Because they've got the mentality to keep on trying things. Okay? Failure is inevitable in life. When you try things, failure happens. I want you to see failure, short-term failure, as a positive because you learn what you've done wrong, you can build on it and you can improve. Okay? So, let's talk about some practicalities. I've written down five ways that I think that you need to do things to help you improve your maths and do well in maths. First one, guys, you've got to be in your maths lessons. Okay? It's no good missing lessons, being late. You've got to be there, ready to learn. Keep your exercise book neat, number two. Okay? Have it labelled. That's your book. Take some pride on it. That's what you're going to revise from and how you're going to um, learn the material for your exam. Number three, the amount of people that I've been teaching that don't want to do homework. 
I know you've probably got better things to do at home than homework, but think about the long term, okay? There's data suggests if you do your homework, you do better in exams. So why would you not give yourself that chance? Okay, I want you to do every single homework that you're set because it's for a reason to make sure you understand things. If we want to look at a little graph, okay, move this, it's not going to move. If we do a graph here, just quickly, if you learn something, okay, then your graph of your knowledge of that topic goes right up. But if you don't do it again, your knowledge is going to start dropping down until maybe you forget it. If you recap and revise, do your homework, what's going to happen is it's going to start dropping down, but you'll bring it back up, and it will stay up for longer. So if you do your revision, if you revise, you'll be doing much better. Three so far. Number four, you're going to get stuck, okay? I get stuck with things, you're going to get stuck with your maths work. It's how you deal with that. You need to ask a friend if you're stuck who might understand. You need to ask a teacher, or you can use the internet. You guys are lucky. You can type into Google, find out whatever you want. If you said that to someone 30 years ago, they would think that was an amazing ability to have, to be able to just look something up straight away. If you've got a smartphone or access to the internet, there's no excuse to say, I don't get that, I don't know what that means. Just type it in, okay? If it's a maths word, if it's anything like that, type it into Google, you'll get some answers. And number five is about revision, okay? Start revising early. Get it into your routine. I would say revise two hours every week to prepare for your exams. If you do more, that's good, okay? But prioritise your time. You might have hobbies you enjoy more, maybe going out, but just think, this is for your future. Once you get a good grade, that's your grade done then, okay? So when you can't do something, make sure you can do it. Keep trying, okay? Right, what else are we going to talk about? I will be asking the class for questions later guys. I'm afraid if you're watching me on the internet you can type your questions in, you can't ask me live can you? Okay. Oh, I want to talk about target grades to be honest. Okay. Target grades I'm not too impressed with. What happens is your data is all put onto a massive system throughout the whole country and a target grade is predicted for you. But it's not for you personally. Whoever made that target for you doesn't know you, doesn't know who you are and your true abilities. Okay? It's saying on average, this is what you'll probably achieve. You can break that target grade, you can be an anomaly, you can do better than that. Okay? If your target grade is a C and you think you can get a B, you know your own head better than anyone else. You're the only person in the world with access to your brain. So you believe that you can do it, and you work hard for that. When I was at college, I was told by my teacher, you're going to struggle to get a grade B. And I thought, wait a minute, I don't want a grade B, I want to get a grade A. So I worked hard, for myself, I got the grade A. At university, I messed up my first year exams. Okay, So I had a choice, do I quit? Or do I actually start trying to do really hard work and really push myself? So I decided that I was going to put myself out there, I was going to try as hard as I could, okay? And I went from doing very little revision in the first year to working all through summer when everyone else was having a good time, revising every day, resitting exams, and then for the next two years at university, I tried to work twice as hard as other people were working. By the time it came to my final exams, I was working 14 hours a day. Okay, so there's no limit to how hard you work, that's up to you. 14 hours was probably a bit too much, but you can make the choice what you want to do. 
Okay. Be ambitious. Don't think, oh, well, someone else thinks that I'm only expected to do this. It's not up to them. It's up to you. Okay. Don't do it for anyone else. Don't do it because... Um, your relatives or your parents are telling you you need to do well, do it because you want to do well. Once you get your certificate of your grade C or your grade A or whatever you're aiming for, you've got it forever. You can be proud of it. Yes, it's going to be difficult. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but guess what? That makes it even better because you know you've achieved something that was difficult. Nothing worth having is easy. Okay, that's basically what I was going to say to my class and to you guys over the internet. So let's open it up to a floor to my class. Have we got any questions you want to ask about what I've said or about maths? Why did you want to be a math teacher? Good question. So I became a maths teacher because... I actually really struggled with English when I was at school and I had a great, actually I had a, quite a few English teachers that, as I went through, kept getting changed and people thought that I couldn't do English. It was right, I wasn't very good at English but people just wrote me off. So I started messing about, being a bit silly in lessons and obviously I was getting bad grades in English. Then I got one teacher, when it mattered actually, in year 10 or 11, who said, you can do this. Stop messing about, work hard, you can get whatever grade you want. So what I did was I thought, fine. I started actually revising, working hard, and I got good grades in English literature and language. So I thought, what I want to do is give that gift to other people. My real talent was maths because I quite enjoy maths to be honest. So I wanted to pass it on to other people to get them to believe themselves that they can do it and give them the gift of um, faith in themselves really to take for the rest of their lives. Because I can't sit the exam for you, no one can. I, I believe as a teacher it's got to come from you. Okay. Um, one person when I first came into teaching wasn't going to work for me, didn't want to do any work and he said I'm not going to get a C and I don't care and I said fine, nor do I, I don't care and he couldn't believe that I'd said that at the end of the day I think a C is a hard thing to get so you need to deserve it, you need to work really hard for it if he wasn't going to work hard then he shouldn't get a C. And on that point, I think someone who gets a grade C, um, who's worked really hard for it, has done better than someone who gets a grade B just by being lazy and not really bothering. Because maybe that person could have got a grade A. So really, they shouldn't be as proud of themselves. Maybe on their CV it should say grade A instead of grade B, but they just couldn't be bothered. Okay. And that person who worked hard for the C has really achieved their full potential. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Anything else? Um, <clears throat> um, how did you stay focused when you were at, or in your second year? Like, at university? Yeah, like avoid any distractions and stuff. It's quite a fine balance between um, having a, a social life, not just having 100% work um, and getting the good grade that you want. So how I stayed focused was in my head I believed I want this. So the most important thing for me to do was to get that grade. Yes I wanted to see friends do other activities and fun things but the thing was that is that you actually feel better doing something fun if you've worked hard first because you deserve it. Okay, does that answer the question? Yeah. Anything else out there? Okay, so let's wrap it up then. Um, 
hope I'm not just waffle on about rubbish. I hope it makes some sense and maybe you'll make the choice yourself to uh, really pick things up and, and just go for it, okay? You've got nothing to lose. It's quite scary to say, I'm going to put myself out there, do what I can, because the person who's lazy has always got the excuse of saying, ah, well, I didn't really try anyway. Who cares if I got the D? I, I could have probably got the C if I worked hard. <laughs> so what? They don't have the, they don't have the grade C. Okay? A, someone at a job interview won't look at the CV and say, well, is that a D but with a chance of a C? I'm not sure. They're just going to see what's written down on that page, okay? So you need to think about that. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you achieve maths. Real talk. <laughs>